Salmon are an icon of the Pacific Northwest. They've held an integral place in the cultural heritage of Native peoples for thousands of years, and they continue to represent important social, economic, and recreational values. Yet, over the past century, numerous salmon runs in the Columbia River Basin, including the Meta River, have declined. Several local populations have gone extinct, and others have been listed as threatened or endangered. Humans shape the landscape of the Medhau to fit a diverse set of needs, and many of the changes that benefit people reduce the quantity and quality of habitat available for fish. Many factors that contributed to the declines began more than a century ago, before people understood the connection between healthy rivers and forests and healthy fish populations. Activities once considered harmless, like log drives down the river, riparian logging, or suction dredge mining, are now limited to protect salmon and the health of their ecosystem. However, the legacy of past actions remain present in our watershed and limit the potential for salmon to recover. Recovery efforts to improve stream conditions include habitat protection, which preserves remaining high-quality habitat, and habitat restoration, which improves altered and degraded areas. In order to thrive, salmon need habitat that represents the four C's. Cold, salmon prefer a range of 42 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Clean, free from excessive fine sediment and chemical pollutants. Complex, cobbles and boulders, log jams, and tangles of tree roots and vegetation along banks provide young and adult salmon refuge from high flow and predators. Habitat off the main channel, such as side channels, wetlands, and ponds, provide slower flows and increased feeding opportunities. Connected. For salmon to access the variety of habitat needed in different seasons and different life stages, habitats need to be connected with sufficient water. Here are examples of common restoration strategies to improve the four seas in our watershed. Large wood installation. For decades, people removed wood from rivers because it was thought to increase flooding and limit fish movement. Today, we understand that in-stream wood provides many critical benefits to fish and stream health. With streamside tree clearing and development, there are fewer opportunities for large trees to fall into the river. Engineered log jams are constructed to mimic historical log jams while streamside forests regrow. These complexes of interwoven logs increase fish cover, create pools, and ensure water velocity diversity, with areas of both fast and slow current. These structures create places to avoid predators, find food, and seek refuge from the fast water currents of spring runoff. Several thousand logs have been installed in the Medhau at over 20 locations. Monitoring of structures has revealed extensive use by a variety of fish species, including Chinook and Coho salmon and steelhead. Young fish are especially attracted to jams and use the small, tight spaces of the structures for feeding and safety. Culvert renovation. Culverts are pipes that are installed to pass water under roads. However, if they are improperly sized, they create barriers to fish movement. The downstream end of the culvert may be too far above the water to allow fish access, or water flow through the culvert may be too swift or too low to allow safe passage for fish. Culverts that are too small can become plugged with debris during high water. This can undermine the culvert and is the primary reason for road washouts in the Medhau, which can contribute large amounts of fine sediment, reducing habitat quality for fish. Many are replaced with a channel-spanning arch, or bridge, which are sized to pass flood flows and debris, and greatly improve fish passage by allowing unimpeded access both up and downstream to many miles of stream habitat that were previously blocked. Funding sources, such as the Family Forest Fish Passage Program, provide funding for culverts to be replaced on private land at no cost to the owner. Floodplain and Side Channel Reconnection Floodplains and side channels provide areas for spawning, feeding, and juvenile rearing. They are especially important during periods of high water, acting as slow water refuge from the fast, turbid waters of the main channel and providing abundant feeding opportunities. In many locations in the Medhau, levees and riprap were constructed to prevent floodwaters from inundating adjacent developed land. These block access to important side channel and floodplain habitat and don't allow for the river to spread out and slow down, instead passing along that fast-moving erosive current to downstream neighbors. Levy and riprap removal projects have been implemented in the Medhau over the past few years. Post-project monitoring has documented extensive use by fish with high densities in restored areas. Riparian vegetation planting. Streamside forests, called riparian forests, provide many benefits to streams. Trees create shade which help keep water temperatures cool, bank stability is increased with extensive root networks, in-stream habitat is created when streamside trees fall into the channel, and the leaves and bugs that fall into the stream provide important nutrients. In the Methow, a large percentage of the riparian forests were cleared for development. Although little riparian clearing continues today, the effects of past clearing remain. Re-establishing riparian forests with locally sourced native plants is a widespread and important restoration treatment. 
Over 100 acres along 10 miles of streams have been planted with over 25,000 plants. These plantings require several years of watering and maintenance to become fully established, but will provide benefits for generations to come. In-stream flow. Human consumption of water through residential, municipal, and agricultural uses directly reduces the water available for fish. Most of the year, there is enough water for both fish and people, but during periods of low water, such as in a drought or in late summer, streams can drop to levels which limit in-stream habitat for fish. Irrigation efficiencies, such as piping, water-conserving sprinklers and pivots, and devoting surplus agricultural water to in-stream flows, are examples of projects that have been implemented to boost flows to benefit fish while ensuring human water needs are met. Numerous projects have been completed and include both private water users, irrigation districts, and towns. While the majority of the Madhau Basin is public land, private landowners own much of the property along the Mainstem Madhau and Lower Twisp and Chewuk rivers, as well as other smaller tributaries. A number of different groups work on stream restoration throughout the valley and the county, including the Cascade Columbia Fisheries Enhancement Group, the Madhau Salmon Recovery Foundation, Trout Unlimited, the Madhau Conservancy, the Bureau of Reclamation, the Okanagan Conservation District, the Yakima Nation, and the Confederated Tribes of the Colville Reservation. Any of these groups can provide recommendations and resources for private landowners who are interested in allowing restoration or protection of their properties. To learn more about salmon recovery in the Upper Columbia, visit www.ucsrb.org.